If you want to better understand electric fields, stick around until the end of this video. We'll go over concepts like field strength, potential, and even how food gets heated in a microwave. An electric field is a vector quantity that exists at every point in space and is created by electric charges. The magnitude and direction of the electric field are represented by the value of E, which is called the electric field strength or electric field intensity. On the screen, you can see a positive electric charge and the field vectors for that charge are drawn. The SI unit of electric charge is the Coulomb. In 1909, Robert Millikan was the first to find the charge of an electron in his now famous oil drop experiment. Electric field lines emanate from the positive charge and enter the negative charge. To make the field lines more visible, they are drawn in a two-dimensional space. As shown on the screen, the electric field vectors around positive and negative charges clearly demonstrate the direction and strength of the field. The field strength can be calculated using a formula where the charge and distance from the charge play a role. This equation is only valid for point charges and for other types of charges. We need to use Gauss's law. The larger the electric charge, the stronger the field and vice versa. Now, if two charges are placed close to each other, the electric field around them is determined by the vector sum of the fields produced by each charge. As you can see on the screen, the field vectors emanate from the positive charge and point toward the negative charge. If two like charges are placed close to each other, the electric field in the space is determined by the vector sum of the fields produced by each charge. Charges exert forces on each other according to the equation shown. Like charges repel each other, whereas opposite charges attract. This is very similar to the gravitational force between two objects. For example, consider the Earth and the Moon. They attract each other through gravity, as described by the formula shown. Gravitational and electric fields share some interesting similarities, which we'll explore more later. But there's one key difference. Gravitational force is always attractive, while electric forces can be either attractive or repulsive. This is because electric charges can be positive or negative, whereas mass is always positive. Now, Let's look at the concept of potential energy in a field. Imagine Earth. Due to its mass, it creates a gravitational field around itself. We know that changes in gravitational potential energy are given by the equations shown. This involves integrating the force vector over the differential length element dl from point i to point f. The force on an object is equal to its weight. This formula depends on the object's mass gravitational acceleration and height. Assuming that gravitational acceleration and mass are constant, gravitational potential energy depends only on the object's height. If the height changes, the potential energy will change. Now, if points at the same distance from the Earth's surface are considered, as shown on the screen, what are called equipotential surfaces are obtained. Movement perpendicular to the gravitational field lines doesn't change potential energy. However, if we move between equipotential surfaces, the object's potential energy changes. Now, let's examine electric potential energy. The change in potential energy for a test charge in an electric field is given by the equation shown. It indicates how much the test charge's potential energy will change when moving from point I to point F. According to Coulomb's law, if a charged particle is placed in an electric field, it will experience a force. Since the test charge is constant, its value can be taken outside the integral. The dot product of the electric field and the differential length element, dl, means that if the angle between the field direction and the direction of motion is 90 degrees, the change in potential energy will be zero. This means that there are surfaces in space along which an electric charge can move without any change in its potential energy. These are called equipotential surfaces. So, moving along equipotential surfaces doesn't change the charge's potential energy. We can also conclude that the electric field is always perpendicular to equipotential surfaces. When two unlike charges are placed near each other, the resulting equipotential surfaces appear as shown on the screen. 
This principle also applies when two like charges are placed near each other. When we divide the change in potential energy by the test charge, we obtain the change in electric potential, also called voltage, which is represented by V. The electric potential at any point in space is a scalar quantity, independent of the test charge amount, while potential energy depends on the amount of the charge. Typically, we deal with electric potential difference. We choose one point as a reference, zero potential, and measure changes with respect to that point. The unit of electric potential is joules per coulomb, or volt. The unit of electric field intensity, according to Coulomb's law, is newtons per coulomb, as shown on screen. Another unit used for electric field strength is volts per meter. This unit is much more commonly used and is often considered the standard unit for electric field strength. An electric potential difference can be created using a battery. Did you know that Alessandro Volta invented the first electrochemical cell? And in his honor, the unit of electric potential was named the volt. A battery creates a potential difference across its terminals. Now, if this potential difference is applied to two metal plates that are sufficiently close to each other and have appropriate dimensions, after closing the switch, positive charge will accumulate on one plate and negative charge will accumulate on the other. A uniform electric field is created between the plates, neglecting edge effects. These metal plates are known as a capacitor. If we disconnect the battery from the capacitor, the electric field will remain, provided there is no charge leakage. If we have a capacitor and an electric field is present within it, the capacitor will store electric energy. The energy stored in the electric field is a scalar quantity and its unit in the SI system is the joule. This energy can be released as useful work or converted into another form of energy. By placing a material known as a dielectric between the plates, the capacitance of the capacitor can be increased. Another vector that can be defined in an electric field is the electric flux density, or the electric displacement field, which is derived from the following equation. In this equation, the effect of electric dipoles in the electric field is also taken into account. The electric displacement field is independent of the material. An electric dipole consists of two electric charges, one positive and one negative, placed a small distance apart. An electric dipole is typically represented by a vector pointing from the negative pole to the positive pole. If this electric dipole is placed in an electric field, a force will act on it. As you can see on the screen, the forces acting on the dipole are not aligned in the same direction. As a result, a torque is applied to the dipole, causing it to rotate. This rotation will continue until the dipole vector aligns with the direction of the field lines. This property is utilized in microwave devices. Each water molecule is an electric dipole. When water molecules are exposed to an electric field, a torque is exerted on them, causing the molecules to rotate. Now, if the electric field is variable, the water molecules will rotate in sync with the electric field. This rotation generates heat. This is why microwave ovens can heat food so quickly. In summary, electric fields are all around us from the forces between particles to how a microwave heats your food. Understanding these invisible fields helps explain a wide range of physical phenomena. If you found this video helpful, let us know in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe for more engaging science explanations.